Dear all, my name is Marília Sampaio, and I'm going to present the work Fundamental Frequency and Intensity Effects on Sepstral Measures in Vowels from Connected Speech of Speakers with Voice Disorders. This work was recently published in Journal of Voice and was done at the University Hospital Zurich and the Federal University of Bahia. Sepstropic prominence, in short, CPP, has been recommended as a general acoustic measure of dysphonia in standard voice assessment, along with so-called traditional acoustic measures such as jitter and shimmer. CPP measures the amplitude of the sepstral peak, where is also the first ramonic from the ramonic directly below the peak. An alternative sepstral measure is the smoothed CPP, which adds the process of smoothing the sepstra before calculating the peak prominence. The result of the smoothing process is displayed by the red line contour in the picture. There you can see the peak of CPP and, underneath, the peak of CPPS. Both CPP and CPPS are related to periodicity, harmonicity and noise components of a voice signal. In this view, we may expect a higher peak prominence in improved signal periodicity or harmonicity, whether lower peaks are expected with the increase of noise and deterioration of periodicity and harmonicity, such as in audibly dysphonic voices. An advantage of the sepstral measures is that its estimation does not rely on accurate recognition of fundamental frequency and intensity to the same extent as compared to traditional acoustic measures. This makes sepstral measures suitable for the assessment of more aperiodic or unstable voices. Another advantage is that sepstral values of connected speech samples can be estimated. This may reflect a more representative context of voice and speaking function as compared to sustained vowels. Previous studies have shown possible influencing factors in sepstral measurements, such as vocal intensity, fundamental frequency, vowel context, and the amount of voice and unvoiced phonetic content from speaking samples. Considering that voice fundamental frequency and intensity are related to prosodic variations in speech, we aimed to investigate the effects of fundamental frequency and intensity on sepstral measures in vowels from connected speech samples. In a retrospective cross-sectional study, we assessed the voice recordings of 27 Brazilian Portuguese speakers with voice disorders. The participants had a mean age of 45 years in a similar Brazilian Portuguese dialect. 70% of our sample had structural laryngeal findings such as polyps, nodular lesions, sulcus, edema, chronic inflammation, or vocal fold scarring. Furthermore, perceptual dysphonia was absent or mild in almost 60% of the participants. Voice recording procedures followed the standards recommended in recent guidelines by Pathel et al. from 2018. The voice recordings, vowel transcription and segmentation in acoustic analysis was done using Prat program. Selected outcome measures were CPP, CPPS, voice intensity measured as calibrated SPL and fundamental frequency. We selected five vowels A from four Cape V sentences in its Brazilian Portuguese version. The vowels were located in different positions of words and sentences and all belonged to stressed syllables. The vowel extraction was done with the help of the wide band spectrogram. Included were vowels with a minimum of 64.7 milliseconds duration, five full cycles, and type one and two signals after excluding the phonetic transitions. Statistical analysis comprised linear mixed models with analysis of covariance and Bonferroni post hoc tests. The statistical analysis showed that SPL, a single factor, had a highly significant effect on CPP and CPPS, followed by the interaction between fundamental frequency and SPL. However, fundamental frequency alone had no significant impact on sepstral measures. This table of descriptive results shows that the higher and better sepstral values matched higher SPL and fundamental frequency, whereas the lowest sepstral values matched lower SPL and fundamental frequency. This picture shows the prosodic modulation in each sentence through SPL and fundamental frequency changes, which are respectively represented by the amplitude of sound waves and pitch line contour. Regarding the vowels with higher sepstral values, which are in the green circle, we observe the presence of higher SPL and fundamental frequency contours. 
These vowels are positioned in the beginning of words and sentences, in pictures B, C and D. On the opposite, vowels with lower substral values, which are inside the red circle, are represented by the lower SPL and fundamental frequency contours. These vowels are positioned in the end of words and sentences, in pictures A and B. Additionally, in extracted vowel 1 from sentence A, CPP, CPPS, SPL and fundamental frequency were all significantly lower as compared to the extracted vowel 5 from sentence D. Extracted vowel 1 was positioned before an unvoiced and noisy fricative besides being the end of a word and sentence. Furthermore, vowel 5 was part of the glide I within the top pitch accent of the sentence and was positioned in the beginning of a sentence. Higher SPL and fundamental frequency yielded better CPP and CPPS in these phonic speakers. This means that syllables spoken louder and higher had better values probably because they were produced with higher vocal fold tension, better vocal fold closure, resulting in better harmonic organization. Regarding the speaking prosody influence on substral measures, higher substral values are expected in voiced signals that are in the initial position of words and sentences. Those may be produced with higher vocal tension and therefore stability and harmonicity. Further, lower values are expected in signals that are at final positions in words and sentences due to a lower vocal and subglottic tension and signal regularity. Concerning the core articulation effects, the proximity of unvoiced consonants may have increased the amount of noise in the signal, lowering the substral values, while the higher vocal tension for production of the glide I may have fostered better substral values. So far, so-called voice quality measurements are performed without control of speaking voice as PL and pitch. Thus, We call attention to the importance of controlling for SPL and pitch while setting out thresholds and normative values. Patients speaking louder may present higher and better substral values, so higher substral values could also be found, for example, in hyperfunctional voice disorders with or without vocal fold lesions. In this sense, it is important to apply a comprehensive thinking during the clinical interpretation of acoustic measures in a multidimensional voice assessment. We still need to understand better the behavior of substral measures in different voice disorders. In conclusion, speaking prosody patterns are influenced by language structure and pragmatics, dialect, gender, cultural, social, and educational aspects. Thus, it is necessary to understand how prosodic patterns and core articulation affect the acoustic characteristics of tokens based on various speaking tasks in different languages. The present work brought up further unanswered questions that need deeper investigation. For example, how does voice pathology affect prosody in the CPP and CPPS? Will we find better intensity and fundamental frequency range in healthy voices or milder disorders? Do higher speaking rates affect extracted vowel duration and hence acoustic measurements? Are there any effects of core articulation on extracted vowel in voice and speech disorders? Are our observations true for combined indices incorporating CPP and traditional acoustic indices such as jitter or shimmer? Therefore, there's more groundwork to be done in a variety of voice tasks. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. You can also access more details of this work in the recently published article in Journal of Voice.